the Men's Health Podcast, all about fitness. We kind of designed this podcast to allow people to have some good listening info while they're doing their cardio, working out, commuting. And we wanted to bring you guys the live version today. It's kind of a demonstratable. I'm going to be going through my gym bag. Uh, introducing with me here is social media enthusiast. <laughs> you can Paige. call me editor. We yeah. should start paying her to be here. <laughs> probably right. <laughs> I know she enjoys it so much, but... <laughs> oh, you should man. ask for a title change because social media enthusiast just sounds like you're just trying to hang around. And also our producer, Michael Sneedon, what our up? video producer, also podcast producer. And uh, this, this should be fun. You know, first of all, if you are not, if you're looking for this, you have not yet listened to the, the Sweatcast, it's an iTunes, SoundCloud, where else? What's wrong with you, first well, of yeah, all? Well, yeah, first of all, get a life. Help <laughs> us out. iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, uh, Google Play. Uh, tell us in the comments if we're missing anywhere because it always seems to be like there's like 50 places to listen to podcasts. So we're only on 49 of them. So let us know. <laughs> and uh, please uh, be sure to rate, share, like, and help uh, help us get the word out as well. We've got some really good ones, like one of them, uh, 15 Ways to Kick Pain's Ass. That's a great episode if you're having any pain or have ever had pain, want to prevent pain. We did one on the Ultimate Holiday Survival Guide mm. so you don't gain weight going into the holidays. And today this is like one I get a lot. Like people, first of all, I'm sure people are wondering what's in the drink. What's in the drink? That, that's a different podcast. Show them uh, your shoes. Show them your shoes. <laughs> uh, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? And what's your address and your social security How do I number? lose belly fat? How do I lose belly fat? <laughs> Um, and they ask a lot about the stuff that they see in the videos too. Correct. So I wanted to go through today, um, you know, what's in the gym bag, give you guys some of my favorite training tools. We're going to take some uh, questions too at the end of this after we go through all the various items in my gym bag. Paige is going to let us know. So if you have questions, let us know. Hopefully they're questions that we can answer in a certain radius because I can't, I can't get up and demonstrate. Yep. Otherwise the audio gets bad. Stay there. Uh, I'll, I'll stay right <laughs> here the best I can. Um, quickly before we start, I got a special... Uh, someone's girlfriend uh, direct messaged me. Don't take that the wrong way. Um, and she asked me to say happy 31st birthday to Ro Rodolfo Dorado Gomez. November 22nd, apparently he's a big fan of me, which means he's my only fan. Uh, and I appreciate that, man. Have a beautiful birthday. Happy 31st. And you've got a great girlfriend. Uh, and th that's all that was. I just All she, all she did is she asked that, and I, I uh, said happy birthday to you. So nothing bad happened yet. So let's get into the... What a uh, nice birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she gets you a physical gift too, because I personally, if it was my birthday, a birthday for me would not, a birthday shot up for me would not be enough. <laughs> not suffice. I'd like a dinner and, <laughs> you know, a uh, trap massage. You just get tight. <laughs> okay. Uh, Paige, first of all, before we start, what do you got to say? I feel like you're holding back. Um, yeah, they can all hear the loud buzzing noise going on. Everyone's commenting on that, so I don't know if we want to... And they don't like it. And no, <laughs> they don't. And I'm like overstimulated now and didn't know if I was allowed to say that, but I figured that's the only way I could communicate that to you right now. So overstimulated. So he's, okay. he's working on the loud buzzing noise. Uh, I don't know if there's much I can do. Um, if you listen to the podcast uh, when this is posted, though, it won't be there. That's, that's a good point. There's, Perfect. There's a good quality there. So let, let's first, uh, here is a good gym bag that we have at Men's Health, the ultimate gym bag, they call it. Uh, you can check it out. Paige is going to post a link for that. We've had people ask about this, uh, where you can get it. It's available. Paige has a link. She'll post right in the comments. But let's get into, like, the first couple items. Um, and Mike, you forgot that he forgot his gym bag today, knowing that Sorry. we planned this for so long. And he forgot. It's so embarrassing. It wasn't important enough to remember, I guess. Um, so let me know uh, towards the end, like, note some stuff that's not in my bag that you might want to mention. Okay. First thing, this thing is like a staple. I call it, It's called the Rumble Roller. So this is my foam roller of choice. And, you know, why do you foam roll? And the, the big benefit of foam rolling really is just to help improve tissue quality and help, if you consider, a lot of people use the analogy of, if you consider your muscles like the strings on a guitar, when they're really, really taut and tight, it, it's pulling and creating tension in the system. This is really going to kind of help unwind the system, relax the muscles, alleviate pressure on the joints above and below the muscles, and one of the things a lot of physical ther therapists will say is that if you feel pain roll, like rolling the muscle, it's a sign that the tissue quality is just not where it needs to be. So you're, ideally the goal is to use this enough, even though it's like a medieval torture device, <laughs> uh, especially initially, so that when you do use it, it doesn't feel painful. It just feels like you are relaxing the muscles, and it's a great recovery tool. And these little teeth are just great to help really get deep, deep in, like not just the superficial 
uh, muscles, but like you'll really like this is a, a game changer. It's called Rumble Roller. Paige will post the uh, the link for that as well Thank right you. now. Oh, you did wow. You know, fast. Uh, Daniel McPhail is making a really good um, point. <laughs> McPhail? Uh, yeah, uh, that's his name. Uh, thank you, Daniel. I did ask them all to turn their phones in airplane mode. I'm going to check one more time. Are all your phones in airplane mode? Yes. I turned mine completely off, and it's under the table. <laughs> okay, as long as it's under the table. Mine is also airplane. There's an airplane at the top. Jess? I don't have here. Well, Daniel, I don't have any more answers for you, bud. I tried. Um, so, it won't be there in the in the... I podcast. Sorry. No, back it's all to good. you. Back it's all to good. back to the foam roller. The uh so the rumble roller, I recommend it. Again, you can use any foam roller, but again, this is the most aggressive one I've found. And it comes in a couple different uh, uh, the blue one is a little less intense, this is a little more dense, the black one. So uh and I like the half roller because it's a little more easy to put in your gym bag, transport with you to the gym. I travel with this baby sometimes. Uh another good mobility tool, even more uh transportable or portable. Portable is probably the right word, is uh, a peanut, okay? So the peanut is basically one of my favorite massage tools, mobility tools, and you can make this at home by taking two tennis balls, putting it into a sock, and then Ooh. just kind of wrapping the sock. Or lacrosse balls. Lacrosse balls, um, golf balls. Uh, golf balls have been used, but they're small. and I Really? I yeah. Oh. I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, they're basically two lacrosse balls fused together. I got this one from, where did I get it from? MobilityWide.com? They have one at MobilityWide.com. But I, I got it from another place. I think Rogue sells them, too. Rogue will have them. But uh, this is this is just a great tool. Uh, you, uh, one of my favorite ways to use this is actually just take your shoe off, put all your put your foot entirely on the ground like this, and just massage the entire plantar fascia underneath the foot. really helps relax some, some tired feet after a long day. And uh, also, people find after doing that movement, it actually even will open up the hamstrings and the hips, and they can touch their toes more than they probably could. Uh, just one of the most portable tools. And, again, just like a couple drills pre-post-workout. I-, I love using this to dig into the glutes, um, putting it right in the ground and just sitting on the side and just massaging, adding motion at the hip. So it's another one that I always bring with me. And, again, I can take it with me when I travel. Here's a thing that I maybe the most underrated training tool out there. It's called the Fat Grips. And basically what you do, you can put these on dumbbells, and it's it's just going to add a much bigger stimulus to strengthen your grip, develop your forearms. It also will create this irradiation effect because it's harder to hold and really engages more muscle. It does actually alleviate stress through the wrist and elbow joints. Elbow joints. It's not going to eliminate problems that you have with your wrist and elbow jo- joints, but it's just something that people find that can alleviate that. And you can put them on pull-up bars. I do dips with these. I will even put them on, like, TRX handles, or I put them on battle ropes last Friday. That was awesome. Like, beyond just, like, getting a crazy hard and muscle pump, my forearms are just, like, flooding with blood because of the extra demands of this. And, again, just simple, something simple you can easily take with you. And I love taking these to hotel, hotel gyms because a lot of times you don't have a lot of weights in the hotel gym. So I put these on a pair of 10s, 15s, 25s, and it makes a lighter weight go a much longer way. And they're actually pretty affordable. So check those out. And again, we're, we don't get anything for sharing these tools. Uh, I may have been sent some of these tools in the past, but if it's going to be in my gym bag, it has to be effective. It has to be worth the space. So that's why we recommend these. Another good option. So uh, chalk. Mm. Chalk is always a, a big concept. It's called liquid grip. And I'll actually do this right now since Ooh, we nice. are live. All I do here is, oh, beautiful. So I put a little on my hands. Oh. It, it's, it, the color is initially a little bit concerning, and then in about a minute you'll see what happens. And basically, it is portable chalk, liquid chalk, and it dries. And I can go through a full training session for at least an hour, and it, it'll still be on without making the mess that chalk can make. And uh, highly portable. The one thing I will say, I, I did a workout once, and uh, so you're in about a minute you'll see like I have white hands now. And I, I went home. I, my wife had this is like the biggest source of tension in my house <laughs> is leftovers and me in particular me eating her leftovers so I, I went in I grabbed the handle of the fridge door opened it up and I had her leftover Brussels sprouts with bacon but my handprint was left on the fridge <laughs> so don't commit a crime and don't eat your wife's leftovers well, make sure you wash your hands fully yeah. you will have to wash them significantly really scrub because some of the white will remain you can start to see it Paige no yeah I can smell it what does it smell like 
alcohol. <laughs> oh, that's that's something else that's in my gym bag. <laughs> you guys starting to see that? A little bit of white. It's it's it'll dry a little more. You see coming in. So again, Can I try it. Yeah, try it. Just open it up. So if you have calluses or you know sweat, I got real sweaty palms. And when I'm doing a lot of pull-ups or other bar work or grip intensive stuff, this is something I just quickly put on. Again, easy to travel with. You might have an issue because it's liquid um, going through TSA, but they also have like really small keychain versions you can pop on a keychain and uh, access as well. And I think if it's below four ounces, you should be good to go. You give it about a minute. Okay. And whatever, don't ever is this do gonna this. Interfere? Don't ever do this in public, okay? It's not good. It's going to interfere with your enthusiasm. Yeah. Enthusiasm? <laughs> Here's another one, all right? Whoa, it's like a clown back in there. Yeah, no. <laughs> Look, man, I, I use this stuff every week, and it, it, there's like certain things that I, I will prioritize fitness equipment over clothing, too. Yeah, like, I'll, oftentimes I'll be out yeah, of clothes no. because I had to make room for the TRX. Or, <laughs> but this is another great one, right? A, a total body suspension trainer, the TRX. There's lots of different models, but I'm a fan of the TRX. And you'll see here, this is a door anchor. So when I'm in hotel, I can actually uh, loop it over the door. I close the door and I can do a full body weight workout, particularly accessing the pulling movements like rows, uh, you know, other various uh, scapular movements for the upper back, mid back, that it's hard to access when you don't have equipment, and uh, you can do tons of stuff, like single leg squats with this. Check out TRXtraining.com. Uh, and again, like, some would say it's expensive, but it really is like a home gym. I mean, honestly, I, I can take this with me. I can get my strength, mobility work. You can also attach it to uh, outdoors on a tree. Any sort of uh, power rack, you can take it to the gym that way. So it's a really cool thing I, I would highly recommend. If, if not only just to start having access to do all your upper body pulling stuff for balance, so you're not just doing push-ups, uh, but there's so many other exercises you can do using this uh, suspension trainer, so I'd recommend it. Like, uh, you've heard of mini bands. You've used mini bands. Yes. So it's a small band. Here's the typical mini band, all right? And typically what you use this for, you can do a series of movements for your core, your shoulders, your hips, a nice good amount of elastic resistance to intensify those movements. Great for putting around your knees when squatting or doing hip thrusts to help actually engage your lateral glutes more and get more of a knee out feel to actually improve your squatting form. Usually when I wear these during squats, I'll find I get you know a more range of motion, better form and technique. You can attach them also around your wrists and do things like push-ups and bear crawls to help mm. engage your external rotators, the whole rotator cuff area. My favorite one for the lower body is called the hip circle from howmuchyoubench.net. And you can see, like, how heavy-duty this is. Like, this is used by people who squat, you know, 800-plus pounds. Um, so and like me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Last week, you hit, like, 750 raw. I did, yeah. She's been training hard. And uh, you can wrap it many different ways, do hip walks, and it's wide, so it isn't as uncomfortable. It also has this grippiness to it, so it doesn't slide up and down on you. And, again, one of my favorite things that I take with me to help enhance a nice lower body workout or get some more glute work. <clears throat> This is also in my gym bag <laughs> because you never know when you need some hot sauce. All right, and I, I'm a big fan of Cholula. I go green pepper, chipotle, chili lime, regular. Um, a lot of times too, if, if I'm had just done a workout, I want to have some food afterwards. So at least I have a spice, a condiment ready to go. Do you disagree with that? No, no, that's that's really smart. Is it bad form? No. Okay. No. Because I think it's important to. You know, to spice you your never food know up when a little you're bit. Need it. You never know when you need it. At least it's not ranch dressing, it, no. which, is, which is common. They continuously loop. So we talked about mini bands. There's so many things in this bag. Right Where now. did you say they can get the hip band? Uh, how much you bench dot net. Ooh. It, uh, is it not in the? Uh... In the comment. Oh, right there. Okay, sorry. No, no, maybe pay attention to the show notes. Someone accused me of sleeping in the comments. I was like, I'm the person who's responding <laughs> to everybody, not sleeping. Do you like a nice coffee? I have coffee. Okay. Hot coffee. That was a bad choice. This room is like 80 degrees. <laughs> so a sweater. I know. Mini bands we talked about, also a continuously loop resistance band. And uh, so if you didn't want to have to invest in something like the TRX, uh, this is like a $10 to $20 band, depending on where you get it. Uh, it's from, I like them from resistancebandtraining.com. And again, you can loop this around a support structure like a door frame, a power rack and do various pulling movements like rows, 
face pulls, pull aparts, and uh, super portable. Uh, one of my favorite moves of this is just a, I'll step back a little bit, see if I can, if I hit you in the face page, I apologize. <laughs> I mean, just adding s sets of band pull aparts between sets of bench presses to help improve your upper back and rear delts. shoulders and core. Um, this is just something that I always have a band with me of some sorts and they come in so many different sizes um, so I definitely would recommend checking that out. The best jump rope. Oh my god. So many things. So this is called a, this is from Cross Rope. Okay. All right. And the cool thing about this is they come in like, I think I've got like five to ten levels of weight I can just interchange based on what I'm trying to work. So you can see I can just quickly take it on and off. So if I want to get more of a, you know, a high rep power speed component to it, I go with a lighter rope. And they have, some of these are as heavy as one or two pounds to get a heavy rope effect. But again, it just allows me to interchange just on the handles, cross rope, one of my favorite jump ropes. Pretty much the only one I use right now. Um, I'm a big fan of this one. It's a nice smooth, and I don't, I really don't like jump roping to be honest. Um, Someone asked a question about jump roping a few minutes ago and I was what waiting for a good entry point and I, I'm going to interrupt you now for it. Okay, please. Justin said, I'd like to ask BJ's opinion on jump rope for cardio. I do intervals of one minute jumping, one minute rest, but any other ideas for blasting the fat? That's a great one. Uh, one, minute, one minute on, one minute off is phenomenal. You could also do something where uh, you do every minute on the minute and you, let's say it's 50 to 100 skips based mm -hmm. on your fitness level. So you try to get 100 skips as fast as you can in that minute, rest the remainder of that minute. I also find this to be a great tool to, so if you're doing strength work, you could do some jump roping uh, in the active recovery instead of just completely doing nothing. And it tends to be pretty non-competitive. Mm -hmm. um, unless like you're using your shoulders too much and then it can affect you on things like pull-ups and bench press. But uh, it's a great, relatively low impact cardio exercise, great for cardiovascular condition. And again, a very portable thing I can kind of take with me anywhere. Um, I don't do a whole, I mean, I've got like the two two legged pattern down. I can go fast or high. I'm not, I'm not really double undering much, to be honest. Um, I'll do some single leg skipping, but my jump rope skills are not great. So I, I use it more just a regular variation as a way to get some cardiovascular work in. I got a record for uh, yeah because I, I do do the double unders. By the way, uh, I think the noise is gone, right? No one has commented on it for yeah. about. Two minutes, I think so. No, but I, I just saw a comment that says, well, one, I saw a comment that said, thank you, Helen Keller, for the mixing. I did see uh, that. <laughs> two, two, I saw someone said that the noise is gone. Oh, good. You're not seeing I don't. That? I don't hear it. No, I, I actually know I don't see it, but I'm going to take your word for okay, it. Okay, I think it's gone. And uh, I don't hear it. Back to jump ropes. Back to, well, yeah, Benny go ahead, please. R it. RPM Fitness uh, is my... Uh, go to. I've seen what us right. I've never used that one. Yeah, you it's like great. that one. It, RPM okay. is great. It's got um, it, it turned really well for double unders and. So uh, check that out as well. Um, two different options, whatever you want to work with. But again, the stuff that we enjoy, a jump rope is just a really nice, simple tool to have to take with you. Um, if you are in a hotel and you're on higher floors, then that that becomes your choice whether you want to actually do it. To me, my workout is more important than their sleep, <laughs> so I, I just find a way to get it done. Uh, what else? Another strange thing, but baby wipes, okay? Ooh. You gotta keep it fresh. If you are someone, and the this motto. is, <laughs> yeah, it is the motto. I mean, look, I, I know this, this is a fitness show, but at the same time, I do feel the need to do public service occasionally. Paper, t uh, toilet paper is not a clean way to do it. What do you clean? Paste. Whatever, <laughs> I mean, well, honestly. Hold on, hold on, back up. <laughs> You don't know what he's referring to? <laughs> no. I mean, you know what this is for. But it's, it's, it's versatile, but at the same time... Oh, my God. We, we just have to be honest about the fact that if you're taking uh, cheap toilet paper and trying to clean Sorry. those types of things, it's not going to work out as well as you want. Respect your underwear, respect your laundry, and use baby wipes. And I always have them with me in my gym. I, they, we said we're going to do exactly what's in my gym bag. <laughs> baby wipes. Respect your laundry. Respect your laundry. <laughs> respect your underwear. Respect yourself. And respect yourself mainly, <laughs> but also others. So that's just something that's always in my bag. These are not Belgian wafer. 
Belgian waffles. Or Belgian waffles. <laughs> or Belgian waffle makers. These are slides. So you've seen many slide boards. Uh, there's lots of models out there. This is my favorite one because of the surface area of it. So if you have larger hands or feet, um, you can actually get the whole thing on there without it sliding off. And they can also, this is actually pretty cool too, you can connect them. So it becomes like one... See that, Mike? Did you see what I just did? Yeah, I did. I see wow. you do it all the time. <laughs> I've never shown you that before. <laughs> That's this, awesome. I reserve this for this show in particular. So you can actually like make it like a mini sled. And this will slide on any surface. Uh, wood, carpet, rubber. Uh, the rubber resurfaces will be a little more high friction. So actually, it's a little more resistance. Like trying try to do lay curls with these, where you put lay on your back, put your heels on, and you do uh, you basically get that sliding action like that with the legs coming in and out with your hips up lights the hamstrings on fire and again that's one way uh if you are someone who does a lot of deadlifting or squatting and still wants to work your glutes and hamstrings this is a great portable option for hotel floors and again any surface cement it even goes on what else do i have in here anything else i'm missing guys um, there's a couple things that are not in the gym bag kettlebells do you have kettlebells okay so uh gym bag? Well, I don't know. I wasn't expecting baby. I like weights. kettlebells because they're small and portable. You see the you see the white, yeah, yeah. And they're known. They're typically less than a hundred pounds. Uh, see the white from the liquid grip that came in. Mine. Yes. You didn't, you didn't put enough on. Were your hands wet? No. You got wet hands. Like I didn't kid. have wet hands. I just didn't put that much <laughs> on because I was getting nervous. You're like kid page. Um, yeah, nerves do make you sweat in the palms. That's scientifically proven. But a couple things that are not in the, the gym bag that we can't fit, like kettlebell wise. I do like the kettlebells from Onnit. The, the, we have like a whole line of the, the primates. Like there's a gorilla, a orangutan, a howler. They've got ones with a cyclops. Uh, it's just kind of a fun thing that I enjoy. It doesn't necessarily enhance your workout beyond like, you're more likely to pick it up and want to use it when it has a, a friendly face smiling back at you. Have but, you found that? But, I found that. What if, what if it's like someone you don't like? That's motive. That's another. I mean, that you, yeah. So just swing them around. If you a could bit. like customize the faces on your kettlebells, like your boss, or yes. you know, an, an ex. Yeah, exactly. Or a co-host. Co-host. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So those are some of the kettlebells I like. There's also some good ones from, from Rogue. We talked mm -hmm. also about. Uh, we get asked a lot about the incline bench that we use in our videos. It's an adjustable incline bench. From Rogue Fitness, it is like super heavy duty. Yeah, very solid. It's solid, um, and it, it can adjust from you know fully upright to all the way flat. Uh, people have asked a lot about that. Um, oh, another one. So if you're a bench presser from the same company that makes the hip circle, that big mini, not, not the big one. Where is it? So this was the uh, my favorite mini band, the hip circle, from the same uh, guy. Uh, it's called the Slingshot, and you basically put it on your upper arms and it does exactly what the name of the product does says it does which is create a slingshot effect so as you lower the bar even doing push-ups so it's great for assisted push-ups or dips because as you lower it stretches and kind of gives you an assisted effect to come back up to the top it helps you in the hardest part of the motion at the bottom but also when doing bench pressing you can use to heavier weight or do more reps with the same weight so a nice overload effect uh, because as you come down and it stretches it helps slingshot the, the barbell up so again, not necessarily something you need right away as a beginner, but if you're someone who really wants to get their bench press up and you know be a 300 pound plus bench presser, a lot of people have used this with great success, and it's just a cool tool um, that can allow you also like you do a couple normal sets and maybe you're fatigued, you put this on and you can extend your workout a bit and get some practice with heavier weights or just more reps. What do you think uh, that puts on your max? <clears throat> I think I mean it, it's like a depending on. There's various levels. Uh, the more advanced you get, there's some heavier ones you can use. But, you know, probably 10 to 20 percent. I, I found where uh, if there's something I can do like four reps with, I'll probably do eight with the sl with that slingshot on. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, like, again, these are just some cool things that are easy to put in a gym bay you can have. You don't need these things to get results. But if you're into fitness, you know, you want to find ways to to spark, you know, innovate and, and make things more fun and that th these are just some fun things to work on but again like if you are someone who struggles with push-ups um my wife uh can do good push-ups but not for high reps so when she wants to do high rep push-ups well <laughs> look called out. She, called out. she she uh she called me out you saw the thing i posted on social media yeah she left a note so it was 
that that story I told earlier about me going in and stealing leftovers again. This is a huge cause of conflict in our household. Sure. And she put a post-it note that said, "You touch, you die," <laughs> on these leftover Brussels sprouts. Um, that really, I mean, it's like, why is he going in there to steal Brussels sprouts? Well, <laughs> that's my life at this point. <laughs> but they're also they were like really good Brussels sprouts. They had like bacon lardons and you know like high end Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, she, I, you know, anyway, she can do higher reps with this, and it's a good way to kind of get the push-up effect. And it also, because of the way it works, it makes, it makes you kind of pull your elbows tighter to your body instead of flaring them out, which actually takes stress off the shoulder. So, again, some cool options that way. Some things I don't have in the bag that I'd recommend. Um, oh, another one for the bench. It's called the bench block. So, if you ever heard of what's called board pressing, it's when usually <laughs> – you see, like, these two big dudes, and the one dude is, like, hanging over the other guy with his junk as he holds this board on his chest. Yeah. And, you know, they're doing bench presses through a, a partial range of motion, just touching the board, a variety of, of boards. So sometimes one, two, three, I've seen as high as five, based on which part of the range of motion you want to work on building your bench press. So if you're someone who really struggles with lockout, you might go with a five-board press and work on that range of motion. Or maybe you struggle right off the chest. The board being set right at that particular range of motion helps you build that. So it can be a form of overload training, uh, strengthening particular ranges of the, uh, the the full range of motion repetition. And uh, what I like about this thing, instead of having – in high school, we used to have, like, a towel, and you'd put it underneath your shirt, but everybody would use this towel. These are, like, hundreds of, like, teenage boys, you know, thousands of, of reps. And we keep sharing the towel, and then, like, there was this MRSA outbreak. <laughs> So there's this is a very hygienic way. All you do is you take the and you, do you post that? The, yes. The bench blocks, okay. The MRSA outbreak. I, that's yeah. Also, <laughs> just post about MRSA so they're familiar with it. That's probably gonna happen at some point if you train long Educate enough. Educate yourself. It's it's a, it's a serious thing. Oh, I believe you. You can lose body parts. Oh my gosh. Um, and if anything, you just you just get like these terrible skin rashes. So you and, got it. Uh, Eat the mic. I will. So you I got will, it. I will neither <laughs> confirm nor deny if I've had MRSA before. Um, but I will say this, the bench block, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you did. stop it. Um, the bench block has a, basically you can adjust it and position it. So it attaches right to the barbell and depending on which slit you put it in, it can vary the actual length of the board. So you want, you can position it one way. So it's only an inch off and it goes from like an, an inch all the way up to five inches and it sticks right to the barbell. And it's a really cool way to get your board pressing in. And a lot of guys too, that have had, you know, uh, a lot of wear and tear in their shoulders and that full range of motion pressing just isn't available to them. Th this allows you to kind of get uh, a, a more partial range of motion so you can still press and work your chest, shoulders, tries, but in a, a more of a pain-free range of motion. Yeah. So um, we, we get a lot of questions on shoes. So let me just touch on that quickly. Shoes. The, uh, before I do that, mandatory, every one of my gym bag will have a sleeveless hoodie. Mm. Look at this. I like the Nike ones, to be honest. Again, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but this is it's just, like, super comfortable. And to me, the sleeveless hoodie tells me that you're, you're a meathead who gets it. Yeah, you're here to party. You're, you're, yeah, yeah, exactly. But you also mean business. You mean business. <laughs> your, your torso is super cold, but your arms are burning up. Well, that's the thing. The, the, versa, the versatility, <laughs> right? The versatility is I could wear a long sleeve or a short sleeve shirt underneath it. Mm hmm I've got the hoodie I can just pop on whenever I need to if I'm trying to go, like... I was going to say, when in what instance do you need a hood? Uh, if you, you live in Pennsylvania, don't you? Indoors, in a gym. Uh, when you don't want to be talked to by anybody else. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair. That, honestly, that's, that's... Cut off your peripheral. Yeah, you just you put it right on, and, and also blanches. it'll soak up the sweat. Like, the biggest reason I use sweats is because I sweat in such an obnoxious way that becomes not only unsafe for me personally. I slip on my sweat constantly. So you'll find me constantly going different parts of the floor once one part is soaked. Um, it also allows me to leave, like if I'm at a gym, public gym, I can leave that setting and not have such a, a hot, sweaty mess left behind. So it soaks it up, but it also allows you to, you know, you train so you can you can see what you're doing. Mm. So, you know, you go sleeveless, you can see the arms, you can hit them up real nice. Um, and you can kind of walk away feeling good about it. Mm. And I have to cover it. There's an intimidation factor yeah. with it. Um, also, cut out the middleman. I, I get, I used to, I don't have, I don't have any sleeved shirts that I wear to the gym at all. Um, and if I get them, I cut them off. And this is one of the few actually, really? yeah, because I'm going to get pit stains. Uh, I don't, so, that's why I never wear sleeves to yeah, the gym either. So just cut them off. Why even have them? Solid. 
you, well, I mean, no, no, no. Are you arguing the, the legitimacy? No, of this I, claim? I'm, I'm trying to think of. Have I not seen you like sweating a, a sleeve shirt before? I thought, of course, I have. But you may. I mean, maybe in, maybe for shoots. You wore something. that. You wore that shirt to Facebook Live, and we were sweating. That was a different. That was a Superman shirt. Oh, yeah. That's yeah right. This is Captain America. Oh, sorry, I got my. <laughs> Clearly, she's not <laughs> leave into her superheroes. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's, that's just embarrassing for the, all of us, Paige. The craziest thing you do, though, PJ, when you work out is you just wear the sleeveless hoodie and nothing else. Yeah, well, I, I do go bottomless. I mean, uh, because there's just a, a level of freedom there that I think you should explore at least once, particularly when doing plyometric movements. <laughs> Deep squats, you know, those are the movements you just want to have that freedom. People like to put on knee sleeves and tights. I'm just like, you know, I want to be yeah. comfortable and loose. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some would call that the tea bag effect. <laughs> I don't know. We won't go into that too much. But uh, so one of my favorite. So there's three basic shoes I, I like. Again, I don't get anything for this. This is what uh, all the stuff that I tend to get sent, the things that I enjoy the most. I know, Mike, you're a big fan of the Reebok Nano 6s. For sure. It's a nice. Oh, uh, I don't have the 6s. Oh, you don't? I wish I had the 6s. Yeah. The 6, uh, anybody who's had the 6 that has had the previous version says it's the best model. Uh, it's got a really wide toe base. So it's got a lot of stability to it. You can run, lift in it. Um, and it, it's a, it's a CrossFit-style shoe, so it also has that versatility where you can do rope climbs. and So you can pretty much – CrossFit is like everything, right? So you can do almost any activity with these. Um, one of my favorites is called Noble. And the reason I like these, I have – I suffer from a condition called high calves. Mm. So it's where the calf starts at the knee, and uh, it's got very slender ankles. You're so, so brave. I, talking about this. It's a serious problem. Yeah. Uh, it is the probably beyond the conflict I have m- with my wife with leftovers. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> each day, the insults I get about my calves probably affect me the most. When's High Calf Awareness Month? <laughs> every day is High Calf Awareness Day, and every month is High Calf, high calf Awareness Month. Yeah. If I had to pick a month, it probably would be the summer months because that's when you wear shorts mm-hmm. the most. You're right. It's uh, July. It, it, probably July. Yeah. July probably makes the most sense. Oh, wow. But it's a minimal shoe, and it's small on the foot. It kind of fits like a sock, so it actually makes your calves look proportionally larger. When I wear a big huh. shoe, it just highlights how small my calves are. You should wear heels. I've tried that, too. <laughs> and uh, I've even tried it where, like, it just, I don't know, I, just, I don't get the stability I need with, from the stiletto. Yeah. Um, but I like these a lot, and I, I, I recently ran eight miles in these. And uh, I wouldn't recommend it again. I built up to it, but... Man, uh, as, as much as calves like mine can grow, they've grown a lot from a more minimal shoe, and it, it forces you to really uh, not depend on the shoe to get the distance and be limited by how, how far your, your own structures can take you. I also like the Nike Metcon, too. This is my favorite style. Um, almost looks like an old-school Air Max. Remember the, those old? Yeah, style? yeah. Um, and this is super versatile, and they actually added, if you do things like handstands, um, this heel situation allows you to kind of slide up and down in the walls. Oh, um, handstand push-up. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, hand, or handstands against the wall. Oh, against the wall. Gotcha. gotcha. I, I thought mean, you were just saying these shoes are great for handstands. Yeah, they're, they're perfect, <laughs> actually. You just put your hands in them and you get a lot of stability. <laughs> this is, uh, people here take things very literally, so I apologize. Um, it's a podcast, too. Like, it is. We got to make sure that. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the top, top three shoes, I'd say Noble, Nike Metcon 2s, and the Reebok Nano 6, in terms of an overall training shoe, if you're like a pure distance runner, then obviously you got to look at uh, I mean, how that would work for you. If you are looking for a lifter, I know Reebok makes a good lifter. Noble does as well. I think Nike has that Nike Romello or something. Yeah. Lifter meaning like has elevated heels. You can do Olympic lifts and squats. Our camera person, Jess, Jess is a big runner. What, what's your favorite running yeah. shoe? Brooks? Brooks, yeah. Brooks. Brooks, here's how I describe Brooks. Um, straight performance shoe. Right. Right, I mean that's not something. I mean, it's You're saying it looks like crap. Yeah, I mean, usually it's a type of shoe that where someone will ask, like, does this serve an orthopedic purpose? <laughs> um, but it, it's they're super stable and durable, um, and they can put a ton of miles on them. Would you wear them out for a run? Yes. Um, if we're going to Chipotle, probably not. Can't take um, them off. But no, I, I guess I haven't had Brooks in a long time. Um, I know when I used to wear them. No one would ask me where I got those shoes. <laughs> so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Paige, do we have any... Oh, I guess the last thing I would mention, two other things that we get asked a lot equipment-wise that aren't necessarily in my gym bag, but I'd recommend 
the pull-up bar, that, that adjustable freestanding pull-up bar we use from Trapeze Rigging, uh, people ask about that all the time. And it's, I think it's like $300 or so, but you can actually collapse it within a minute into a portable bag you can carry with you to take outdoors. It's an investment. Um, it's not going to be as stable as a racked or a, a fully wall-mounted or floor-mounted pull-up unit. But again, if, you know, it works for us for videos, and I, I use it almost weekly for my own training. So that's from Trapeze Rigging. Um, and then the other one, uh, the Ban Bell Earthquake Bar. So that's basically, it's a bamboo bar. And we posted uh, videos of this, and Paige is going to post a direct link for you as well. It allows you to use, uh, to attach bands to the edges of it, and then loop, uh, well, so a loop band that is holding a kettlebell. So you've got this oscillation effect. So these, these kettlebells are hanging off the bar. The elastic resistance of the band creates this oscillation, and it actually helps improve uh, basically the whole neuromuscular system. You get more muscle activation. It works your joint stabilizers more. You'll get better muscle pumps. It's not something you use exclusively, but you can do things like over at presses, carries. I've d done it with curls, uh, bench presses, even things like squats and lunges. And it really just fires up your nervous system. And a lot of power lifters will use it to help uh, maybe on their, their lighter days or for uh, more extra volume work or recovery work or fortifying the joints. Another one of my favorites. Anything I missed that you wanted to point out? Mm. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I feel good with that. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Paige, questions? Bring a positive attitude. That wasn't a question. I thought you were going to ask me what else you should have in your gym bag. Uh, were you, were, would you just put it in the bag, the positive attitude? Just, well, I just like bring it with you. That's uh, my oh, thing. That's like necessary. Uh, I thought you were just like spouting cliches. <laughs> <laughs> I do that's, that's what it sounded like to me. Every day is a new day. <laughs> yeah. Everything happens for a reason. I mean, that's right. um, do, do your best with what you're given. Yep. Yeah. Always strive to take pride in what you do. We love to see you smile. Yes. <laughs> Everything is better when you do it with someone else. What? Isn't that one that they use You only live once. You only live once. Um, if you, you need to believe before you can achieve. Anyways. If I can see it, <laughs> I can believe it. And if you can believe it, you can achieve it. There's nothing to it. <laughs> so do it. Like, just do it. I mean, just that's, do that's it. obviously just do it. That's too. the motto. That is the motto. Um, so we'll take some questions, hopefully, that we can answer through words and not demonstrations so I can stay close to the mic. I assume most of the questions are for me. M Mike, uh, they typically are. It's, you know. What's wrong with the audio? <laughs> What's wrong with the audio? <laughs> can you fix that buzzing sound? Yeah. Paige, um, what have you got? I'm, someone, Hugo loved Metashred. Thank you, Hugo. Yeah. Uh, what's his last name? I hate when you're asking these questions. Oh, because I. I, I <laughs> Paniagua? Okay, because there's a, another Hugo that has been a big Metashred fan that, I'm not sure if it's that Hugo, but it, Hugo, thanks a lot, brother. Metashred Extreme comes out first week of January. Actually, it's available available for pre-order now. Can you post this link? Uh, MetashredExtremeDVD.com. So I, I wanted to make uh, a DVD that most closely resembled the way I like to train, which is kind of a, a metabolic bodybuilding style of training. Um, and that's what this product is, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's... Uh, it's extreme, and as they say on the, the cover, extreme workouts for extreme results. Mm -hmm. I think it's my best one yet. So if you guys want to check it out, great New Year program. And again, uh, it's kind of like where shred meets gains. That's how I describe the product. Just do it. Just do it <laughs> and um, get better today and make a change. Where the rubber meets the road. Where the rubber meets the road, <laughs> so does the barbell meet your chest. The road less traveled. The road. <laughs> <laughs> This is a, this is like a, this is one of your things. I do love it. Love I, I like that a lot. Um, so thank you, Hugo. Rodolfo said thanks for the birthday shout out. Happy thirty first, man. That you've got a great girl because uh, I very rarely I get a lot of messages, uh, many not too kind. Yeah, most uh, mostly not too kind. Yeah, and many with photos that I don't want to see. <laughs> um, so I appreciated the request, and I hope you have an awesome birthday. Let us know what you're going to be up to. What else you guys have planned? Maybe it's a surprise. Maybe I ruined the surprise. <laughs> I don't know. But happy birthday, man. He also had a question. Can I yeah, let's that? do it. Yeah, I let's, let's. I should have said that originally. Should, I did ever. not. This should be uh, his episode. Yeah, this is this is for you, Rodolfo. Okay. Uh, he goes, thanks for the B-Day shout out. That's so amazing. And my question would be, do you feel that EMOM type of training would be more effective as typical bodybuilding workouts for building muscle? For building muscle? <laughs> That's actually a really good question. For building, for purely building muscle, 
you can't, and a lot of people will say, oh, don't listen to bodybuilders because they take drugs. And it's like, well, frankly, <laughs> more and more, I mean, I, I, I'm shocked. I know a lot of people in this industry, the number of people that actually take drugs now, not even, uh, they're not even high level competitors, even just casual exercisers. Yeah. It, it'll like blow your mind. But, uh, uh, and it's unfortunate, but most people that are at a level that we can't understand are there for a reason beyond dedication. Um, it doesn't mean we discount the effort it takes to get there or the technique techniques they use. So that, that's important. So people can't just discount a bodybuilder who uses a lot of single joint isolation work, classic high volume, tra high volume training or body part split training and gets amazing results with because they may or may not do drugs. Um, most people would agree if they really have an unbiased opinion on fitness that you can't maximize a, the muscle in a particular body part without doing some direct work for it. So if you want to get the biggest biceps possible, you've got to do direct biceps training. You can't just do rows and chin-ups. They do hit the biceps, but they're not going to hit them directly enough to fully maximize the results from that. So um, you, can, you can use EMOM protocols not just for whole body workouts. You could use them for an upper body focus workout or lower body focus workout. But for pure hypertrophy or muscle gain, the best workouts will probably be more time under tension focused, more tempo focused. Um, ones that are going to use a variety of loads within the same session so you completely uh, fatigue and stimulate all your muscle fibers, both the fast and slow twitch muscle fibers to grow. And uh, for muscle gain, my favorite one for muscle gain in terms of training split is upper lower, doing at least two of those a week. So four total sessions a week. Uh, it, you can really focus on one area of your body at once. Um, and it allows you at least two direct sessions each week. I, I prefer that over the you know, one body part a week date set up, like you do biceps and, you know, chest on Monday and, you know, that, that hitting your, your muscles only once a week will not maximize muscle growth. And all the studies that we've seen, and also in particular under uh, situations of, of drug-free training, natural training, you want to hit those muscles directly at least two to three times a week. And that can be done whole body. Again, I just prefer upper, lower. Um, and there's nothing wrong with EMOM workouts for that, but an EMOM workout tends to be better for, a more strength power focus when the reps are lower or a more fat loss focus when the reps are higher. Because uh, the goal is actually to get things done as fast as possible, which in, in some ways is not giving you the incentive to extend the time under tension on the muscles or play around with tempo, particularly the lower end or the eccentric portion, which will give you the most muscle gain. And Paige, I've never seen you so excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm really energized by this conversation. That was, I mean, that's like... That's like coffee talk right there. <laughs> what would you say were the best points that BJ just laid out? <laughs> pa Paige is probably wondering, like, wow, at this point I should be getting paid to have to look at this. <laughs> I'm going to talk to somebody about that. <laughs> <laughs> but a happy birthday. Hope that answered your question. He said thanks. My pleasure, no, Actually, he said sweet, but I think he meant thanks. He's Maybe grateful. You're, that you're sweet. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think so. No? Too sassy? Yeah. What else do we have? Um... BJ, how big are your arms? How much do you bench? <sighs> um, how much you bench? I don't know. I've never, I know this is like, you think I'm lying. I've never measured my arms. I'm almost afraid to find out because. Should we do it? Facebook Live on Friday? You're assuming I haven't already done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, visually, you, you're, you've managed to, to figure out how many calories I take in by just looking at my I, nails. It, how close was I, though? Uh, I don't know because I don't track that, okay. but um, I think you're probably pretty close. Yeah. Uh, Mike is like a, the calorie whisperer. Yeah, I'm the. <laughs> I don't know how I don't I don't know I, I I the most I've ever benched was uh, 385. Wow. Uh, but I was also 275. Oh, gotcha. Um, living large. I mean, eating like eight <laughs> meals a day, uh, two sandwiches in bed as I was going to sleep, <laughs> just to get the calories up. I did 225 for 24 once in our that's probably more combine test. Actually, yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm a little I'm actually uh, my fiber type is a little better in a not a high endurance range but a mix. So I'm, I'm not uh, the best for max outs, but I, I'm pretty good for reps. Didn't Dave Jack tell us one time that his 225 was like 40 reps or something? He Something did. Ridiculous. He did 315 for 12. That's insane. Which is uh, so David Jack is another longtime men's health contributor. He's he's still like he does he he, he exercises like once a week. Twice, yeah. <laughs> once, like he'll yeah. do maybe once. If it's twice, it's because he has an event he right, has to yeah. be active in. Uh, and this dude's triceps still like flapping the wind, <laughs> uh, but he did 315 for 12, which is just like I did 315 for six, when I could do um, 
that max. This is back when I was 22 in college. Um, but again, I will say at the time, because all I thought that was important was bench pressing, and I had all these knee issues, so I, I couldn't, at that time, I couldn't squat. Um, so I put everything into my bench press, and some of the worst, uh, some of the best bench pressers were not necessarily good football players. And some of the worst lifters were the best players we had in our team, because it, it's really like, if you want to be good at a sport, you got to play the sport more and do less lifting. Yeah. Really, like, I, I, I didn't get that. I just thought it was about being as big and strong as possible. So, I, But I couldn't do a pull-up at the time. Mm. So I'd rather be where I am right now, where I can't bench as much. I could still bench over 300 pounds, but, um, you know, I, I can do 15 full range of motion pull-ups. I've got more balance to my physique, and I, I don't have to eat eight, eight times a day just to sustain mm. uh, that level of uh, size and um, – I don't have to use the bathroom as much. That's another <laughs> benefit of that type of uh, yep. adjustment. <clears throat> All right, I have one more question. Let's do it. Uh, a woman would like to know, do you usually design this program only for men, or can women do your programs as well? We love the ladies at Men's Health. I mean, Paige is here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, do we have more females in the Men's Health? It used to be, and now it's like exactly 50-50, okay. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, on the digital side, I guess only 20 20. Yeah, it's probably about 50-50. Yeah. <clears throat> this, this company itself is yeah. ran by a female, yep. uh, Maria Rodale. Uh, so this is uh, someone we, we take great pride in creating co-educational fitness content. Uh, you'll see in the actual program, all the programs I make, you'll see men and women doing them. <clears throat> and really, men and women should really be training. If the goal is general fitness, fat loss, conditioning, we all should be relatively training the same way. There, there aren't huge marked differences in terms of what you should be doing, obviously, if women want to do more glute work and guys want to do more upper body work, you start to customize what you want. But I love to hit the glutes. I mean, I was, I was pushing to call the new Metastroid program Meta Ass because there's so much glute work in it because the glutes are your biggest, most metabolically active muscle in your body. Um, I think a well-developed set of butt cheeks is just the most physically pleasing thing on the planet. This is third sweat cast in a row. We've yeah, we, because it's there's only be a, been like four, so it's uh, how many have there been? There's been five. five. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, it looks like our social media editor is not listening to yeah. our podcast. I don't think you're. Ready I was to get off by yet. one. Oh my god. <laughs> so, well, when you when you've only done five, that's like a huge percentage. Yeah. That's, okay, that's the point. Off. That's the point I'm trying. To, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm take my headphones off and get out of here. You will relax. I have other things to do. No. You, I bet you do. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, glutes. glutes. Oh yeah. So. Uh, I believe in the butt cheeks. The glutes are glorious. Uh, they, like hot dogs, they, they, uh, they plump when you cook them. So they, they're going to hit those really hard. So it's, it's a great program for men and women, uh, it, it, but it's intense. I mean, it's going to be challenging. If you want to make a change, you've got to have a program that will progressively overload you. And, and within the program itself, there's beginner, intermediate, and advanced options shown at all times by three different models as I coach them through it so that no matter what exercise you're doing, you can make it easier or harder and uh, scale it for your fitness level. But also, every time you do the workout, you can build up to working out to the harder options. So uh, we take great pride in that for both men and women and all fitness levels. And, and uh, if anything, your butt will never be as sore as it is from my workouts. <laughs> okay? I can confirm. Confirm? Yeah. <sighs> I love that page. That, that confirmation was what we needed. <laughs> so first live uh, sweatcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to, on iTunes, SoundCloud, page will post the link. We just posted the latest episode uh, from last week that went live today. I, yes, that went live this morning, yeah. That was the, uh, well, the uh, one before was... December issue preview. Yeah, so we did what we call Ice Coffee Talk, and we went through, we'll give you like a preview of the new issue of Men's Health for December, and we just kind of, you know, uh, shoot the breeze about all the cool training tips in the magazine without even really scratching the surface, to be honest. Yeah. And there was also one about the best new fat loss workouts, so be sure to check it out. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, that's all I've got in terms of... Uh, can we end on uh, Paige holding her mug up next to her? Just so everybody can see what it <laughs> what says. What does that say? It says, world's best entry-level employee. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Me. World's, world's best... <laughs> Who gave you that? Please tell me it was Social family. media enthusiast. I bought it for myself. I saw it on Amazon. It's like, wow. The that's back me. of it says I bought it for myself. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what's more sad, the, the <laughs> caption or the fact that that was a self-gift. Yeah. I don't know. On that note. Paige. What? The, the sky's the limit I know. for you. I mean, you're involved with some really great stuff here. Yeah, I know. I think I, think I do a good job. I think I'm the world's best. You are, that's the cup you should have gotten. 
Yeah. Maybe we should get Paige a cup for the holidays. My birthday's on Friday. I want to get you a cup. How old are you? 24. 24, man. I just turned yeah. 34. I just turned 25. Did you? Yeah. We should get I don't you know how a cup. I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> we should get you a cup that says I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'm doing, trying. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can with what I'm given. Also, uh, sorry for the, the audio. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what? I'll, I'll be like Judah Friedlander from 30 Rock, and I'll have a different uh, mug every time. He has a different hat every time. So, sorry about last time. I like that. <laughs> sorry for the audio. Should I, should I share the, uh, the quote-unquote mean tweet thing to finish off? Yes. Okay. So I get a lot of really interesting comments on social media. <clears throat> and uh, one I got, I actually can't look it up right now, but basically it was a picture of me doing push-ups. And the, and the guy commented, the guy's ripped, but that haircut is awful. And then it was like that monkey emoji where <laughs> he covers his eyes. So I was like, <clears throat> what's the best way I can respond to this? And I was like, what would compel you to, to make that statement? And then he replies back, oh, no, man, I'm a huge fan. I hope you didn't take that as an insult. <laughs> huge fans can be the worst. And I'm like, how, how else would you want me to take that insult? Yeah. Would, I mean, there's there's varying degrees of insult for sure, but like he didn't he didn't mean it to be an insult, but he said it was the hair was so bad even a, a monkey in the jungle would cover his eyes. <laughs> See no evil. It's amazing. But uh, social media is a funny thing, man. I'll tell you what. The one thing that I will say is people are so much better than they are in social media in person. Yeah. Whenever I meet people, man, they're they're people are really good people. I think the fact that you have this wall behind you. It can allow some of the darker stuff inside to come out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it may seem harmless because BJ's got thick skin. But in all seriousness, be nice on social media. I mean, it's, it, it, it means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I will say, Words hurt. It, Words it's, hurt. it's thick, but not thick enough to not collect addresses of people who, uh, <laughs> who have wronged me over the years. <laughs> I will find you. No, it's all good. I appreciate it. And we, we love you guys. Thanks for your support. Uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. Facebook Live this Friday. Oh, yeah. Other things yeah. going on. Uh, get that gym bag we talked about. Hope you enjoyed some of the tools. Peace.